last run just to get a bit of I suppose the sharpness and the reflexes up and have a bit of a kick and a few skill work and it's basically just warming up for tomorrow and just uh, flushing out the legs and uh, ready for a big one tomorrow night. Nice two. Ready. Lovely. Ben Hart obviously has a lot to do with me. We um, you know, the opposition meetings throughout the week and um, you know, we played Hawthorne last week and Monday we reviewed that game. Uh, personally with him by myself and as a team as well we, we get together and, and talk about sort of the defenders sort of stuff. Up at it, up at it. Good key fee. Yes, ready. Maybe come from the other side, get that sun out of it. Yeah, Ben's really coachable. He, um, he, he, wants, he wants feedback all the time whether it be good or bad. Um, and we actually talk about a lot of things to be able to change his game and improve him, and he wants that. Um, he doesn't think he knows everything, and um, which is great for me, and I try and pass on a few things, so he's, he's one that really takes it on board. I think we're kind of controlling our area too this week, yeah. so not getting drawn. Opposition meetings usually about four days out from the game, so but around then you sort of work out who you're going to play on, and that's usually pretty self-explanatory anyway. You sort of look at who the tools are and then picture one of them on you. away, Revolt drags a tackle, well done, comes around you, back in from here, Revolt snaps and puts it through. Ben will stand Revolt for the game. Yeah, when preparing to play Revolt, you, you certainly have to look at the way he plays the game pretty closely, um, because he's a, he's a threat in the air, but he's also good on the ground, so there's certain things that Ben will need to be aware of and, and take into the game, and um, but the best way to prepare when playing is just to watch his tape from the week or a couple of weeks before, and, uh, and Ben's done that. Although, if you know, you know that if he gets off, he's just going to have a jump. So if he does to happen, you have to go with him. Switch it around, switch it around. Oh, yes. Put it up where he lives. Anywhere, if they can get it to about 70 out, they like to just pop it in. Oh. And another oh, tackle, another tackle. one. Oh, yeah. Get there, twos. Get there, twos. Nice. Great run, twos. Good bro. Here we go. It should be fun. One up one with Rewalt. Was he bumped off the ball? Did he flop? The umpire said, "You flop, Jack." The kick to Rewalt. He's a super player, Ben Reed. He works the angles just sensationally well. I am the world's forgotten boy, the one who searches and destroys. player to recover from you know from a game we need to you know work on the recovery phase in the first you know 48 hours and that's and that's crucial and most clubs would, would do that yeah so addressing nutrition rehydrating um you know, going through your hydrotherapy getting your treatment getting your massage you know ben being a you know only a 22 year old player he's still kind of developing so we have to be mindful of the fact that you know that uh, there is a fair bit of load imposed in the early stage of the season because it, the intensity is quite high as we saw last week and so therefore there's more emphasis placed on restoration and recovery. Oh look I don't think they all kind of you know love jumping in the ice bar this is one of the things that um, they'd rather kind of sit in the spa and, and relax and kind of you know fraternise a bit but um, no nah, look I think I think the ice bars is one they don't necessarily like doing. Well guys, on the, um, on the way home now to uh, a lovely home, 
was good to uh, have a good win tonight against Richmond after um, let's get our first win on the board, which is always good. Alex Vasolo can't do a thing by himself, so I have to give him a lift. That's all. I bet I got ragged on Twitter. There you, go. you did? No, I'm checking I'm now. Arrogant. I'm checking now. I oh, sent, no. I, I sense he will be the new die for opposition fans. So arrogant, so forever. Yeah. <laughs> so forever. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Ben. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> He's a parrot, that kid. So it's 12, 12 o'clock now, and um, we're not even home yet. So, uh, you know, obviously, tell it's a long day. Obviously, here's the place. Um, my cat, Max. Hey, Indy. I'm a country boy at heart, so I obviously grew up on a farm, so I've obviously loved uh, love having animals. I might have some of that too, I reckon. Ooh. Um, I thought I'd just I'd sort of try to do as much as what Ben told me during the um, during the week and. All of that stuff is doing my work early, which is um, you know bodying as early as I can because he's, he's very good at I suppose guarding that space. Um, yeah, you got to respect who you're playing, and obviously he's one of Coleman. He's, he's been all Australian, so he's, he's a very good footballer. And I sort of came through the same age group as him. We're in the same draft and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, we'll we'll play on each other you know, probably a lot through our career, which which will be good. And um, you can never really get too far ahead of yourself. And as soon as you do, you sort of get put back in the line pretty quickly. G'day, I'm Tony Shaw and welcome to Vintage Collingwood. Today, I'm going to talk with the Shaw boys, my older brother Ray and my younger brother Neville. <laughs> well, here we are boys, we're back at the Keogh Park Stars football ground where it all started for us three. So, Ray, just your impressions of those days at Keogh Park. Oh, look, they bring back some great memories, Tone. You know, for the Shaw tradition at Collingwood has been absolutely fantastic to to have five members in a family play at the Collingwood Football Club who we all barrack for, with, it's just great. And you now the opportunities come around for the boys and they've accepted those. And um, look, it's, it's a, I'm very proud, very proud father to, uh, to have the two boys, but I'm also very proud of the, the way the family has been dealt with by Collingwood. They've been, been superb for us. Now, Vintage Collingwood is about finding out what some of our great past players have done or are doing now. What, what are you doing, Nev, at the moment, uh, work-wise? Or... I manage a um, ceramic tile warehouse yep. for a company in Reservoir, and uh, no, I really enjoy it. It's just the other thing, you were diagnosed with, um, with arthritis, pretty ordinary arthritis at an age of 28. How can you be a lawn bowler, and you've won tournaments, how yeah. can you be a lawn bowler with hands like that? Oh, I know, well, you just pick up your own way of bowling, it's a bowl on the ball, bowl on the bowl, and you deal with things as you can, you know, you've got to adjust to everything in life, so I've just adjusted and I enjoy me but lawn bowls, we have a great time. We've been very lucky, won a lot of tournaments, so no, it's very good. Well, we're too young to play lawn bowls, aren't we, right? <laughs> and what, what are you doing at the moment, work Yeah, wise? mate, I'm, uh, I'm in charge of maintenance and gardening at a retirement village at Leith Park in St Helena. Mm -hmm. With sport, uh, helping out with the Diamond Valley Super Rules, just taking them for training mainly, and helping out there with the old blokes from 35 to 60, Gee, which uh, is... Uh, you might be ready for lawn bowls, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a big game for the boys this week. Yeah. We've got Carlton, of course, our... Oh. We hate Carlton, the rivals of uh, probably the greatest rival we've ever got. And yeah. Any memories? I oh, know you probably yeah, haven't got great I ones. Haven't, I haven't got some really I haven't got cool good ones. ones <laughs> but I, I always think you know, when you play Carlton, and, and it's a week you really look forward to because it's all the media is about and uh, all the paper talk is about uh, Carlton and Collingwood. My greatest memories probably are when you had to go out and play against their mosquito fleet. We see a pick up by Shaw, snap for goal. It's there. I think he may have put it through a beautiful you could play well against them because they were the best. You know, you, Sheldon, Armstrongs, Marku, Buckley, Johnson. You know, That's just great right. players in the past. Yeah. yeah. What about yourself, Nev? The ball. Well, Probably one thing I've got on news, I've never been beaten by Carlton in a final. So. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I needed that. I've only, I've only played one, and that was 84. First semi, and I, I remember it. We beat him by seven points, I think, at Waverley. Down to half five, Collingwood running. Neville Shaw, no one within 10 metres. Chips it up to full forward. Dacos is there. Can he make it six? Gets around Reed, shoots. It's coming round. It's there, I think, for mine. 
They're probably pretty happy with that, but that, you know, you talk about memories of Carlton, I didn't get to play them against them as much as you blokes, but that stands out as one of my good well, memories. Well, one of the memories I had, we beat Carlton in a semi-final. But we had a little bit of a wager of our football trip money on yeah. that same game. I think it was close to, I know you're not allowed to gamble on footy, but I think it was about five grand. <laughs> Because we did that in those days, you, you know, and I, I we think... We had to it, go overseas. Yeah, well, <laughs> and I just say, if you backed yourself, what's wrong with backing yourself? That's it's right, when you back right. someone else and it's not good, but, and I think we won that game. Took a bit of time to get the money together from the Blue Boys, but <laughs> when we got it, I tell you what, we had a ripper trip. We never played together. I, I, I love playing with you, Ray. Yeah. I love playing with Neville, but it was probably one thing the timing just wasn't right. Wasn't right. Yeah. Did, you, right. did you feel something when you were out there? Oh, of course I did. I did. I felt yeah. that I knew where you were. Did, yeah. Was that the case? Yeah, yeah. you do. You, you definitely do. And you always seem to you know, worry when you were in a pack or something like that. You know, the protection thing's always there too, yeah. I reckon. You're bred that way. You play in the backyard, out in the oval and things like that. You, you kind of get to know where, every, where you are and what you're going to do. And as Nev said, uh, the support, well, you know, in our day, you used to get a whack behind the ear and you knew someone was going to give the other yeah. bloke a whack behind the ear. So it was, uh, that's the way to go. You know, you either get him in the last quarter or the next game you played against him. So, um, no, just having your, your brothers around, it's, it's just great. And it's unfortunate we just couldn't get there, the three of us playing together. But um, two's better than none anyway. Yeah, well, I know we never played together at the one time, but I'm going to remedy that today because I've got a footy here. Beautiful. And I'm just going to go out and prove that I was the most skillful out of the three of us, all right? <laughs> OK, come on, let's go. Right. First of all, I would have gone in and got the ball because these two blokes are outside players. So, I would have been under the pack, handball to Neville, who would then give it to the selfish Ray, who would then have a shot from goal from about 20 metres out, and... <laughs> <Sosa! Go! laughs> the boys, thanks for joining us on Vintage Collingwood. Had a time. ball doing it. We've yep. all sweated up now after that little bit of activity. Uh, on behalf of Get Wines Direct, our sponsor, the President's Selection, that's your pay for today. And please, try and bring some to the family uh, functions, because you never do other times. And we'll catch you next time on Vintage Collingwood. Hi, guys. Welcome to our new online shop, the home for all your official Collingwood merchandise. Check out our full product range, including our latest arrivals of 2012 on-field apparel. The new website features include a user-friendly layout, payment by credit card or PayPal, the ability to like our products on Facebook, and if you're a member, just log in with your membership number to receive a discount of up to 15%. Stay up to date with our new arrivals and exclusive promotions by signing up to our newsletter. Thanks for visiting and we hope to see you back here soon. Yes, a fitting tribute at the MCG last Saturday night for a wonderful football coach. Well, one man that knows all about that, of course, is assistant coach Matt Lappin. He joins us on the club. Welcome, Matty. Thanks, Chris. Now, you, of course, coached under Mick last year, your first year. Uh, tell us about what you learned from the great man. Uh, probably the, the greatest thing he uh, taught me was the importance of team defence. Uh, Mick built his sides around... Their, uh, their defensive pressure, and I tend to lean slightly towards offense. So <laughs> it was a good balance for me to um, be able to get taught from you know one of the great coaches of the game, and and you know somebody who uh, 
coach so strongly around team defence. So with that in mind, what about the transition to new coach Nathan Buckley? What have been the key differences? Yeah, probably the, uh, the most obvious one to us coaches would be that he's a little bit more hands-on. Um, Mick delegated uh, a, lot of, a lot of his roles to his assistants and he had very capable assistants. A lot of those have gone on to become senior coaches. So uh, probably Bucks is just a little bit more hands-on than Mick was. Now you've got some history on the field with Bucks, haven't you? I mean, you didn't quite get on. Yeah, look, we had, it was a bit embarrassing. We had an altercation in the middle of the MCG one day and words were exchanged and as I ran away, I turned and looked back at him and I, I gave him the bird and I ran away thinking... Gee, I just, that would have really hurt him. I just thought I've stuck my finger up at one of the great players of the game in front of 90,000 people in the middle of the MCG. It was very embarrassing. Ah, fantastic stuff. Well, Matty, great news today. Heath Shaw has re-signed with the Collingwood Football Club for a further three years. Here he is earlier today announcing the good news. Yeah, well, I've got some pretty good news um, today. The, uh, the club and myself have come to an agreement to sign on for the next three years. Um, I'm wrapped to, to sort of get out of the way nice and early in the year and um, stay with the club for hopefully the, the rest of my career. And I'm um, looking forward to some more success in the future and, and obviously with the, the family name and, and everything like that, it's, it's great to be uh, one club player and, and continue on with the history of the Collingwood Football Club and uh, the Shaw name as well. Obviously, um, I've played at Collingwood, grew up barracking for Collingwood and, and a lot of family history behind it, so there was no real other options for me um, outside of just signing off for Collingwood again. The club's been really good to me throughout my career, um, through some ups and downs, so um, hopefully I've repaid the faith by signing on and, and hopefully a few other guys can, can do it quickly as well. Great news for the club, Matty, not only on the field but also off the field. Yeah, look, he's a terrific player. Um, he's great for our team morale. Um, he, he never shuts up around the footy <laughs> club and you know, he's a, a real valued part of our team. Well, we've actually got vision of him signing his contract earlier today. So here's the, the copy of my new contract, three years. Terms, obviously, Pendlebury, heaps. Swanee got uh, truck loads. Tomo got mountain loads. Last year, Cloakie is um, to be confirmed, hopefully soon. And then, obviously, H. Shaw got bugger all. So good luck for me. <laughs> uh, Tiffany got a bit more than that, Matty. But look, I want to talk about the rivalry. Now, you've been on both sides. You've played for Carlton. You're assistant coach for Collingwood. Uh, I know when I came over from Western Australia, one of the key things was it didn't matter if you lost every game, as long as you beat Carlton twice. How was it from your perspective? Yeah, look, they're big games. Uh, all players want to play well in big games. And um, you, you know when you walk into the club that games against the Carltons and, and Essendons and Richmonds are really big games. And straight after the win last week against Richmond, it was the first thing Eddie Maguire said. And he said, make sure you tell the boys how important, you know, the rivalry is. Now, we've got some footage here going back a few years. Uh, Carlton v Collingwood. Now, we've got to try and spot you just in the back left. There you go. Now, with uh, Matty Loken there. Yeah, look, he was doing a defensive job on me that day and I was, uh, rubbed him on the top of his head because he was losing his hair and I ended up with a $1,200 fine <laughs> from the tribunal for that fight. So it was pretty expensive. So you can, we can expect some fireworks Friday night? Oh, look, it'll be a physical game. Um, they've obviously in good, pretty good form and um, you know, we, we think the first three quarters we played last week were really good. So um, we, we're going to meet each other in the MCG and hopefully we walk off with a win. Mate, good luck. It's going to be a beauty. Thanks, mate. Uh, thanks, Matty Laffin, Laffin, for joining us on the club and we look forward to seeing you all on Friday night at the MCG. The traditional clash, Carlton versus Collingwood. Next week on the club. Some of them still live at home, but most of them share uh, in houses together. And cooking is one of the skills that some of them may have, but some of them certainly may not have. G'day guys, Sherrod Wellingham here, down in sunny St Kilda, for the Clio Bachelor of the Year shoot. Who wears short shorts? <laughs> Billy Brownis, dictionary, just a great thinker and an inspiration really for the whole, whole world that read books. It's a, Unbelievable, right? All that and more on The Club, 9pm next Wednesday.